R E G A L Regals. Welcome to More Philly Union, the podcast where we seek to more perfectly unite Philadelphia Union fans through discussion and digression, laughter and tears, and most of all, our shared love of the U. We are your hosts. I'm C. I'm E. And I'm Paul. Nice. Uh, oh, I like that intro. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Yay. Um, <laughs> as we mentioned uh in our previous episode since it's preseason for the team it's preseason for us too and we're uh sort of workshopping some new intros so uh see what we like play around a little bit um let us know uh, what you think uh at pod at amorephillyunion.com um so to kick it off um no real housekeeping this week except our uh continued and evergreen plea to um help the philadelphia union foundation um uh, mm-hmm. you can find more info at philadelphia union um click that donate button uh, if you listen to last week's episode we were lucky enough to have Alyssa Radu from the foundation awesome. um so definitely if you didn't listen to that uh check it out um a lot of information there about what they do and um how they're helping chester and delco and philly um, and i realized uh this uh, this this weekend that I forgot to ask her, you know, how does the, uh, the Philadelphia union license plate program actually benefit the, the oh, Philadelphia yeah. Union foundation? I, you know, I was lucky enough to get one, not to, you know, a couple of years back and, uh, uh, you know, it'd be cool to know if some of my registration money actually goes towards the, the union foundation. I, 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 you know, maybe I'll shoot her an email and ask her about it. <laughs> oh, well, or we can save it for her next appearance on the pod. Yeah, so yeah. Get her back and yeah. hold on to that one. Um, and uh, I understand we have a new international download E. Yes. So our international brand continues to expand. We have our first uh, download from Czech Republic. Cool. Which is pretty Ooh. awesome. And we have an extra special download from Unknown. So. <laughs> So I don't know who downloaded us. Um, it's, it's according to this, it's not in the U.S. So um, I mean, let your imaginations run wild. Uh, yeah, is so it the dark web? It is it NSA? Some alien from some other planet? Yeah, that mysterious land known as VPN. Yeah, uh, yeah, something like that. Oh, uh, there we go. Reaching, uh, reaching Man. new audiences left and right. Um, Folks, let's not bury the lead. We all yes. know what we want to talk about. And it's here in should be 72 point font, but it's not uh, <laughs> failed on that one. But <laughs> Allie is back. Victoria is back. Ooh. Oh, Captain, I, my Captain. Yeah, how about this? Unbelievable. So, once again, I would like to credit Scoops. Uh, yes. Our beloved Nancy with uh, breaking the news. I am. Uh, I was having a particularly hectic day, and happened to look at my phone and uh, immediately reached out to these guys. So, uh, thank you, Scoops. Uh, you made our day week. Um, who knows? But, Good job, Scoops. Um, yes. So, um, thank you for that. Um, Dupe to Scoops. But Ali is to the back. scoop. Dupe to the scoop. Oh, that's a good one. There we go. I like it. I like it. So, um, yeah, a couple things uh, about it. Um, the, he is coming back in a new uh, role as player. In, well, this is weirdly worded, but um, he will be a player, um, mm-hmm. but he will also be um, working with player development and as a front office specialist, mm-hmm. there's a laundry list of what that means. Apparently yeah. this is a new position that MLS just um, created. Um, and um, I, it sounds like one, um, each club can designate one player per year in this position. Right. Um, so I don't know. Um, I, I, we can talk about, uh, I, there, if they were sort of waiting to see what the specifics of this was going to be, I know I feel like I've seen other players in roles sort of un, maybe unofficially like this. Like, mm. it didn't Rooney when Rooney came over, didn't he play for a while before he 
made the switch to management. I felt like he played for a hot minute for DC. He did. Um, so, you know, things like, I feel like there have been arrangements like this before, and this is more formalized. Well, this, this is a new, I, I had never heard of this type of position. This mm-hmm. is a player professional development role, mm-hmm. uh, which I, it, it almost feels like it's, you know, like the, the uh, MLS has different levels of player uh, contracts. They have, you know, a general contract, which they use general allocation money to pay for. They have targeted allocation money. They have designated players. Um, I don't know if there's some sort of an agreement with this by naming a player to this position that they get uh, different allow- uh, consideration under the pay costs and stuff. Uh, you know, because I think Ali last year, I don't think he was making, I think he was in that, that mid tier TAM level of, of player. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if this helps with some of that or, or it gives the club, uh, some flexibility in how they structure his contract and how it goes under the, the Byzantine MLS, yeah. you know, contract fees and stuff like that. Um, but I think we all agree I, it, it, from the description of it and from what it sounds like, mm-hmm. it's about where exactly where we would have wanted to put yeah. Bedoya. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I, I wonder too, if it, I mean, this is, this is getting in, in like managerial weeds, but I do wonder if, if his uh, um, salary comes from sort of two buckets now, and that might free up some player mm-hmm. money too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, maybe uh, I, I don't, pretend to know enough about this but um you know maybe they're able to kind of budget some towards uh um, office staff and some towards i don't know who knows i'm making things up um but uh yeah so it's it's interesting i think you're right paul i think it's exactly um yeah uh, it's a great can we read the description of this uh uh, role uh we can it's lengthy um yeah why don't don't you read it and then we can dissect it Okay. Uh, The player professional development role allows MLS clubs to designate one player per year in this new position. The player must have responsibilities enabling him to contribute in different parts of the club's business, including but not limited to coaching, front office duties, and diversity liaison. Under this role, Bedoya will be responsible for supporting various Philadelphia Union front office initiatives in respect to marketing, digital, and social media. Additionally, he will help optimize the club's innovative player development model by serving as an important mentor to the club's young players and their development and strengthening the club's club's overall approach to player rotation. This, when I, it's. Reads like a job description. Kind of. Like, this is the Swiss army knife of positions. (laughs) It's like, okay, so not only, I mean, they should have thrown in like, oh, you're also going to need to be goalkeeper. You're also going to be doing, um. Uh, concession stands you'll be helping with parking uh you know it's like basically ali we need you to literally just do everything uh i mean i'm, I'm i mean you could boil this down to he's but... doing some of this already mentor yeah. to the club's young players check mm-hmm. um strengthening the the club's overall approach to player rotation i would imagine there is at least half a check mark there already Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, under this organization, supporting various uh, front of marketing, it's, digital, social media. I mean, I mean, he participates in them. I guys, imagine this is a little more than that, but that that's our in right there. Look, well, yeah, it, it's it's you know, um, uh, where was it? How's it word? Uh, front office initiatives to respect to marketing, digital, and social media. We are in that sphere. This is part of his job <laughs> requirement. We so you're like- saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's oh, he's he's contractually obligated now. Uh, to, to friend of the pod, Ali you know? Bedoya. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Long time listener, first time caller. Mm. He uh, did share uh, our story last week. On on uh, that's right. Uh, I, I I wasn't going to bring it up, but here we are. He did yeah. share our story on social media. We were all very excited. Yeah, um, that was cool. Eric and I were in the car and amazed that we didn't go off the road. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is. Um, I don't know if I would put this on the Latu level of of awesome news, right? When uh, Hackworth Hackworth brought back Sebastian mm-hmm. Latu, mm-hmm. that was just like you know 
the end of the war kind of news, you know, and uh, and this was up there. It's, it's, it's we hoped this would happen, but as time was going on and there was just silence, it was either you know something had to be happening or like are we allowing one of the the teams, arguably one of the best players that had been on the team, just kind of fade off into obscurity i don't know but so anyway, when this news came up uh you know when we heard the news uh it was awesome i mean i it was such a relief it was such a relief mm-hmm. i i don't mm-hmm. know i was beginning you know actually for the past few weeks pretty much since the new year i was like yeah you know what it's it's not gonna happen you know i mean i could see the union we're gonna maybe do something to honor them but i'm like yeah it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen um you think so. so you thought so i honestly was pretty comfortable after the end of season um messages from ernst and jim that they were going to find a way to make this happen yeah and since ali didn't sign with anybody else yeah i was pretty comfortable that that you know they were going to do right by him and it feels like this is this is that like you know they've set him up to to mm-hmm. run out his playing career here and keep him on beyond that you know, in some role, whatever he wants to make it here yeah. in Philadelphia. I mean, I certainly was was wondering, wait, guys, come on, he needs the preseason. Let's get him in there. Let's get yeah. this signed. Let's get him going. But, like, when you were worried that it wasn't going to happen at all. Yeah, when Christy showed the video of him shoveling snow, you know, here at PA, true. while the whole team's down training in Florida, I'm like, oh, that's that's a bad omen. But I think maybe this is just more speaking of my. You know my neuroses, my fears of <laughs> you know um, in this in this line of work, but I was wonderfully happily um, relieved and surprised when this news came along. Um, I think know. we all were, and I think mm-hmm. a lot of the union fans were. And yeah, and, and once again, the union social media is totally. just—I mean, they're 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 already you know warmed up and rolling, uh-huh. and, and those those the. Instagram posts about him with the the cut up, you know, the, the highlight reels. Yeah, uh, it was mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, this is Bedoya. And if yeah. he can do, if he can do a fraction of that to, again this year, it, it's well worth it to have him involved. And it was right. so cool on those posts too, just to see like oh, well, like all the little posts like uh-huh. sign Bedoya. Where's Bedoya? Sign him, sign him, sign him. You know, it's 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 nice. You know, as Paul to to use your phrase from last seasons. Uh, episode we all suffer together right and it was it was it yeah. was it was suffering shared and uh, uh not that i was delighting in us and our suffering but it was nice to know we were all doing it together i appreciate that it was recognized that it would have been a great disservice not only to ali but to the fandom mm-hmm. <laughs> to just let it um let the whole thing die on the vine. I mean, you can't, there was that that report of the 10 second conversation was so mm-hmm. widespread and and worrying because mm-hmm. I know Ernst Tanner has a mission. Um, you know, sometimes when there's a mission, you are blinded to the, you know, the other aspects of, of, of the human aspects football club. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I figured there were people around him who would intervene, but um, well, like I said, with the, like Eric said, with the, um, uh, shoveling video and all that kind of thing <laughs> you know the worrying i i would have had a hard time with this season if they just sort of let it drop and then maybe brought him back for a one-day contract it didn't yeah. feel right i yeah. mean um i know there have been a lot of players who have done a lot of things for the club i'm not saying there haven't been but he really has embodied the club um you know, just as much, if, if not in some ways more than the two. Yeah. Um, so I, I was concerned they weren't recognizing that. And I'm glad, I'm really glad I was wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was definitely was a, 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 a good move by all parties to get this closed out and get this finalized. And, and, you know, uh, I, I, I'm curious what the structure of the deal is. I'm assuming it's a one year contract, but I, think it is. I haven't heard anything, any specifics about that. Uh, you know, how that's going to move forward. You know, like, does he, I mean, is it a one year with a team con- options or is, you know, I, there's no deep, I haven't heard any of those details, but it's great that it's been done. Yeah. Maybe I think that's them- the implication, but it's not been explicitly stated. You're right. And hopefully this gives them that year to complete whatever transition he's mm-hmm. going into like 
you know, coach, uh, professional podcaster uh, with some you know local podcast group <laughs> uh, or something. But, you know, just, you know, uh, whatever. Um, I think it'd be interesting to see how he's deployed trying to, to replace me is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm already, you know, Christie's 12th favorite Drexel graduate or something like that. You know? And, her, and, her, yeah, and the little brother down. she never wanted. <laughs> that preceded the podcast. Yes, to be fair. <laughs> um, but uh, it will be interesting to see how he's deployed because um, he, uh, El Senio, mm-hmm. uh, had a story, you know, saying a congratulations or something like that. And then Bedoya reposted it on Instagram and said, I'm going to need some of those Ilson Jr. super sub skills. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious. I mean, I guess nobody knows until the season starts and we see how things are going, but I yeah. um, wonder if we might see that more. It also made me wonder if we're going to see Blake as captain uh, almost mm. exclusively or or at least primarily this year. Um, you know, be curious to see how that plays out. Yeah. Like, um, like so. will Blake become now the the starting the captain, captain so to speak mm-hmm. right so just to leave yeah. you with a, a a note from the man himself a quote from the the press release is philadelphia is my home and the union is my club this is the only major league soccer team i have ever played for and where i want to stay you know bedoya is one of those guys we've talked about in the past he's he's one of those players that Philadelphia fans have an easy time rooting for because mm-hmm. every time he's out on the field, you know he's not taking any any playoff. He's not taking any mm-hmm. time off on the field. When he's out there, he's going as hard as he can to do exa- anything he can to help the team. Yeah. Um, and, and you know he he does it on the field. He does it off the field. He does it with what he says. He does it with how he behaves. Mm-hmm. You know, it's clear he love. You know, he loves his family, and he has a great time, and he's wonderful. Seems to have a wonderful sense of humor, and like like just everything about him, st- st- you know, kind of harkens to those great Philadelphia athletes mm-hmm. that the team loves to love, yeah. or that the city loves to love, and so. Um, yeah, he, he hasn't put it wrong, you know. Him and him and Bryce and and you know Kelsey. even like Dawkins and yeah. uh, you know Embiid, they 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 just they know, they seem to get this city and understand yeah. it and and resonate with it. So yeah. I'm glad he's staying. Amen to all that. Yeah, this is where he belongs. Well, um, so moving on to some new signings, um, we have Oliver Semla. From uh, he's a German goalkeeper, uh, most recently of Louisville City FC. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know much more beyond that. Uh, if you guys do, um, I mean, I gotta feel like you know if if they're not happy with the other two keepers that they've got in the you know in the preseason, you know they must have brought in somebody they feel who can start while Blake is going to be away this summer. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully it's him. Or one of the others really steps up and really takes that second second keeper option because, as we saw last year, the union are good, and obviously having uh, Elliot Glesness and Damian Lowe as a rotating set of you know center backs there is going to give most keepers a, a good amount of confidence. But we need that keeper. Mm-hmm. A good mm-hmm. keeper really does a lot for this team. Yeah, and hopefully. He lives up to his namesake as being a German goalkeeper named Oliver. Uh, there's a it's a good correlation there. Hopefully, uh, like Oliver Kahn. Um, oh, Kahn! I was yeah. I was trying to remember which which goalkeeper you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, um, yeah. And, uh, that was a little bit of a deep cut, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also uh, Marcus Anderson. Uh, he's an American forward from Brooklyn um, who has been scouted by Real Madrid. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah. So I, I, I don't came know out of I think the third division of Spain. I forget the name yes. of the team, like Rio something or other. And, yeah. Um, apparently, really, you know, considered you know, rated very highly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, an American attacker could be really interesting. You know, maybe he's the attacking version of Kai Wagner. I don't want to put that much pressure on the. On, on him to, to 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 perform like that, but yeah, that would be amazing to yeah. find somebody in the third division like they did with Wagner, um, but on the attacking side and an American doesn't use up an international slot. All which right, is great. 
I, I was frustrated by the the comments, and they're just comments, you know, online. But so many. Why do you read those? I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, just just a lot of who? Oh, great! Somebody else we've never heard of, and it's like how many? <laughs> how many? I, mean, I never have heard of Kai Wagner who... before we got him. And... Right. So like, you guys don't learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i mean they weren't What's that all like definition that. of insanity uh <laughs> or no it's like the opposite of that definition the definition yeah. of insanity being to do the same thing over over again there's a correlation different results yeah. but, i mean like yeah the union have never splashed big money i mean i think their biggest signing was oro for like three million dollars or something like that um like I, I don't see them going out and signing a thirty million dollar forward. That's just mm-hmm. not how this this team works. They're yeah. they they're still building. You know, they're building from within. They sell. Um, you know, hopefully, eventually, they'll get to a point where they can start selling players yeah. consistently for five and seven million, and maybe spend ten million dollars to bring in some players that are a little bit different in parts of their careers. But yeah, the, some of those. Some of those fans posting on the comments, you, you kind of make them wonder how much of them are paying attention. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it it goes back to the point I'm pretty sure I've made on here before, but probably quite a long time ago, which is that you can have your $30 million player. It still doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win because yeah. it really is ma- mm-hmm. um, how the team mm-hmm. performs together. And, and I mean, gosh, I guess that's such a maybe hackneyed thing to say, but it's very true um you know the messies notwithstanding right. um and but then you know even that look at all the people that they've brought on around Messi, um yeah. uh bending mls rules to their absolute breaking point um but bes- bes- that, yeah but uh beyond that um you know i it really does matter how the team plays together and and so i think that just running out and getting uh, a big name it really is not going to solve all your problems but anyway do we know how yeah. how long these contracts are these like two years two year contracts for these guys i mean it's i don't remember for oliver but i think marcus is like a uh it's like a two-year guaranteed with two two team option years or something mm-hmm. like that and he's relatively young too i don't remember exactly but i want to say he's like 19 mm. um, he's young yeah I don't the remember. whole the whole team is still really really young but I, I, I imagine I'll, I, I, you know, I imagine these are very similar to other Ernst Tanner contracts that yeah. two to three years guaranteed with another club year contract option of, of, of there. You know, as far as contracts go, the, t- the team's pretty, pretty good about that. I mean, the one one that's really worrying is Carranza, whose contract runs out sometime, I think, middle of the season. This I'm season. not positive okay. about that, though. Well, um, I had read that he actually there there have been offers from European teams for him, mm-hmm. um, and he doesn't want to go. He wants to stay. Or so, at least the clubs that came and offered for him are not ones that he wants to go to. I mean, yeah. that could very well be too. But I, I and I know there will be somebody who you know uh, is the right team at the right time. Um, but uh, I find it interesting that it doesn't seem like he's itching to get out of Philadelphia at least, mm-hmm. which is and, heartening. And with this winter transfer window kind of closing, I do wonder if like the union have made him a good faith offer and been like, Hey, you know, if we're, we're looking and you know, this is what we're willing to offer you. If nothing works out overseas, we don't get that interest, you know, let's have a gentleman's agreement that we're going to find some resolution before your contract runs out. Now, obviously there's nothing there that, you know, nothing, no, don't, nobody knows anything that that's actually happened, but I am pretty confident that Tanner's going to get something in place. Maybe if it's mm-hmm. just to, to finish out the season with another season option from the team or something like that. Uh, I don't know what it might be, but hopefully they get it handled and hopefully they get it handled before june i mean i would really love him to see him get finish finish up the season and and have his contract stuff negotiated before we get to the next transfer window yeah you're very good at these speculations i need to get you up to date on the royal (laughs) information because uh there's a lot going on over there and i'd love to hear your thoughts 
Um, oh, with what's his name, Harry being moved down to like 25th in line for the. Well, term. not so much that I think he had to kind of renounce his rights or something. I don't know. But he, they but he flew uh, took an 11 hour flight to spend all of 45 minutes max with his dad and flew back today um, after his uh, cancer diagnosis. It, it's I mean, but there, there's a whole so theory that's... as to or a hypothesis as to why that it was actually um, he had to be there to sign a document saying that he would sort of step out of his line of succession thing. Yeah. So you're going to probably have to edit this out. Um, <laughs> this has been regal talk. <laughs> yeah. Regal speak. Regal corner on our very American themed um, American oh, yes. themed uh, <laughs> podcast. Um, R-E-G-A-L Regals! <laughs> There you go, Christy. You got your spinoff. <laughs> so we were talking about, uh, you know, Marcus and 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 uh, Oliver here. Oliver being an international, Marcus being an American-born. I did uh, recently hear that a, a couple of other union uh, players earned their green card, so they'll no longer be taking up international roster spots. I heard it. Michael Ora, Daniel Gajdog, and Jose Martinez all got their green cards. Nice, uh, which is great, and mm-hmm. that frees up that many more international spots for the for Ernst Hanner to probably sell to other teams because I think <laughs> they're going for about two hundred thousand dollars right now. So <laughs> <laughs> get a mother hot. But also, as a U.S. national team fan, that means there's a chance that Ora Gajdagar Martinez could get called up and capped for the U.S. US team. <laughs> well, so I guess you're set. No, sorry. <laughs> Is that possible? I guess, well, not for Martinez. It's not. Well, I mean, you one can do time. a one-time. Switch. Oh, one-time. Okay. One. Yeah, right. but that, that would mean that you know none of them could play for their 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 national team. Yeah, and Martinez yeah. and Gazdag couldn't play for Venezuela and and Hungary again. I don't know if Ora has ever been called up for for uh, Denmark. I believe is where yeah. he's from. I, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't see that happening. But can you imagine Jose Martinez on the U.S. national team? That would just be fantastic. <laughs> it would harken back to um, what was his name, Jermaine. I think it was Jermaine Jermaine Jones. Jones. Yeah, the German. Yes. Um, when when you know he kind of he and Martinez kind of play mm-hmm. play similarly. Mm-hmm. I think Martinez has much better ball skill mm-hmm. than Jones ever did, but they still were that destroyer kind of you know midfield player that mm-hmm. you know you just did not want to did not want to meet in a dark alley. <laughs> <laughs> um, it- yeah, that's pretty exciting. I think uh, the U.S. team could use the chaotic joy that Martinez would bring. So it's a shame that yes. that probably won't happen. Uh, could you imagine Martinez and and Aronson back together in the midfield together? That would fantastic! That would be awesome. Uh, fantastic! Absolutely. Uh, I feel like Jose uh, Jose Martinez is chaotic joyful. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. But yeah, so a bit of good news there. So then on the downer side, um, Leon Flock uh, is apparently injured, I believe uh, an injury. Too. Yeah, and yeah, this was an, yeah. this was another rumor or, or I haven't seen an official report about this. Okay. Being some sort of a pectoral muscle injury <laughs> that's going to put him out for a, like two months or maybe maybe a little bit longer. Mm. Uh, certainly sounds painful if that's the case. I, I don't know what that injury, where it might have happened or, or you know. When it might have happened, but that's rough. Definitely run inhibiting. Um, not not easy to run um, when you have that kind of injury. Uh, as weird as that may sound, and it's a shame because he, I, you know, uh, as long as is as many years his flock has been here, you forget that he's still relatively young. I think he's like yeah. twenty two, yeah, some twenty three, mm, maybe, maybe, yeah. But you're right, young. Uh, and, and like to have a guy that young missing multiple months uh, playing is is gonna that's 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 a loss, especially in that midfield. But I mean, good thing we got uh, Bedoya back, and you know, obviously there's there is a good number of players there in that midfield. But yeah, Flock has been coming along nicely and showing some real progress. So hopefully he heals up. You know, good luck, good luck to him. Yeah, and this is not the first time he's had a. You know, pretty serious. Well, an injury that has True. caused him to be out quite a bit. Yeah. So, um, very unlucky in that 
uh, maybe he'll go find another one of those crazy German medical breakthroughs that aren't available mm -hmm. anywhere else. And, you know, he'll be back in like two weeks. Better, uh, faster, stronger. Maybe, you know, what it honestly is, he just goes over, they, 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 they you know, bring up one of his clones, they transfer his consciousness <laughs> to the new clone and send him back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we are Leon, Leon Flock. You will be assimilated. <laughs> <laughs> Resistance is futile. All right. <laughs> you see, like, Moving before on. the game, Curtin just, like, presses a button between his shoulder blades and see Leon just power up. <laughs> Bong. <laughs> I am ready to play soccer. Sweet Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can change the language setting. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, not a whole lot to talk about in actual play news, uh, although there was a um, preseason game on uh, the 27th uh, against NYC FC. Happy to report that um, we won 3-1. Yeah. So uh, that is a good thing. Um, looks uh, very much like... Um, uh, sorry, with a lot of the usual suspects, perhaps in some unusual formations. Um, Carranza, Torres, Stag, um, McGlynn, Sullivan, Bueno, um, you know, uh, kind of playing around with who can do what where. Um, this is also before uh, Ali was back. Um, so we'll have to see how and if that influences anything. Um, but I'm sure it will. Yeah. Um, but, uh, NYCFC scored too early, as we like to say, mm -hmm. in the, uh, the first half. Uh, went into the half 1-0, but then, um, uh, <laughs> yes, but the Union um, uh, scored three goals in Yay! the second half. Um, Harriel um, Carranza got his second goal of the preseason. And then new fella, Academy Defender, Frankie Westfield. <laughs> Um, got the third goal. Um, so um, just getting better with every watch game. The uh, highlights, uh -huh. Ariel scoring uh, with his head again, which was always fun to see. Yeah. Um, Carranza's goal, the pass that 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 found Carranza was just amazing. Uh, beat threaded it past the defender, and, and Carranza just finishing in stride, just. Showing his value, hopefully, you know, drawing some more attention. And then I think Westfield actually nutmegged the goalkeeper to, for his goal. So <laughs> nothing Fantastic. like embarrassing a, a goalkeeper with that third goal like that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks very much like uh, towards the last, you know, I don't know, the, towards the end of the game, they um, brought in uh, a lot of the young um, I'm sure, I'm folks, sure. just to give them a chance to play and also we were already ahead and all the things so um it was a, a whole squadron of substitutions and mm -hmm. new names or at least younger names um so uh and frankie westfield first time i've ever even heard that one yeah. so here we are hopefully not the um, last um, no exactly it was, so, it was nice to see this 3-1 win i mean i know we're in the preseason still and this is just shaking shaking off cobwebs, trying out new formations and all that. But, you know, you know, you want your team to win every single game, you know, which game you want to win all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, having lost to uh, Flamenco and then um, it was that kind of that tepid one, one draw against Austin. This is kind of like, oh, I just want to see some momentum building. I know it's preseason. It doesn't matter. So um, when I saw this final score of three, one, it was kind of like, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's more like it. Um, I mean, it's I, not six nothing, seven one, but we'll start here. Yeah, yeah, baby step, baby step, and plus two. It's also nice to see. It's it's nice seeing Harriel scoring. I mean, it feels like yeah, he was starting to get into that rhythm during last season. It's nice to see it happening in the preseason. So hopefully, uh, Paul, like and I said, he just got back from the U.S. national team camp. Yeah. I mean, I know he didn't get to play in the game, but. I'm hoping that that gave him some confidence, and yeah. this this is a glimmer of some of that. Yeah, start start excelling at that attacking defender position, um, which is pretty cool. 
So uh, it's been a bit of a break, uh, brought the team back up here to be cold for a little while and not get too comfortable. <laughs> um, but uh, I believe they're heading back down for a game um, this Friday against Cincinnati. Yeah, um, a little bit of a rematch there. That's right. And then um, on Valentine's Come on, Trevor, Day, let's see the video. Trevor! <laughs> yeah, come on, Trevor. Um, but... Uh, uh valentine's day against new england revolution uh so and that will conclude preseason. that's crazy that preseason will be done in a week i mean i know we're recording now on the seventh so one week from today preseason games will be done for the union wow that's crazy earlier all the time it feels like we just it doesn't feel like we really had much of a break um i mean (laughs) even more so for them (laughs) (laughs) So uh come brings us to uh the first game that counts um mm. uh for anything um on February 20th against Deportivo Saprissa uh, apologies if i mispronounce any of that um but that will be our first match in the CONCACAF Champions Cup so that's so. 13 days from today so that's Tuesday mm-hmm. of that week i guess wow yeah, I guess Tuesday mm-hmm. wow. What are your guys' thoughts on uh, the upcoming upcoming uh, Champions Cup? We we kind of alluded to this a couple two episodes ago, maybe. Like, do we just want to crash out early and just get on with the business of the regular season, or what do you think? I I want to see what r- lineup they put out for the Con- mm-hmm. Champions Cup because if they put out a lineup that seems like they want to win it, then I'll be very interested to see who they put out for their home opener. If they try to run the same lineup for both, I'm going to worry once again that we're going to burn them out. Now, if we go with a heavy rotation in one group or the other, then I'll be like, all right, well, then we guess we're concentrating on one versus the other over the other. I think that's a fair approach. I don't think that the union needs to try to win absolutely every game. So if they Mm -hmm. want to put the season results in the hands of the younger players, I'm fine with that if they really want to make a run for the comp, the Champions yeah. Cup. Personally, I mean, I, I think the CONCACAF Champions Cup final is done. Bef- it doesn't, I don't think that one goes too long. If it finishes fast enough, I think it makes sense to try for it. I mean, let's face it, you win the CONCACAF Champions Cup, you win a, cha- a trip to the uh, Club mm-hmm. World Cup. Yeah. And that's, that's serious. Uh, you know, that would be huge. For any MLS team, uh, it's interesting. I saw a a uh, interview today with Blake, and I only uh, was able to watch a bit of it. But um, he was actually asked about you know all these games that they play and and um, how how can they cope with them as a team? And he mm. said that really they need to just have a, a extremely deep squad um to be able to because he like for example he knows he will be out for international things and yeah. then, you know uh, and and then also also all these games so um unless mls truly just doesn't care about them <laughs> or or the leaders of the team don't care um they really if they want to try to win everything then um they need to have people who can fill in um either when they're tired legs or when somebody's just simply not there yeah. Um, which sounds so quite frankly duh when you hear it, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yet that it was it was a really good point. Um I, unclear as to whether he felt like they had that now or not. He didn't right. expressly say yeah. that, nor would he, I don't think. But um it was it was just an interesting statement. So and then of course the home opener uh versus Chicago mm-hmm. on uh 24th of February, four days after the Champions wow. Cup. Here we go every four days. Buckle up. Uh, yep. So, um, yeah. It's a common. Uh, in other uh, union news, um, just announced today, they have a new partnership with Visit Delco. We have mentioned Visit Delco on this pod awesome. before, uh, which is basically a, a, the Delco Tourism Board. <laughs> Uh, which I, I, I for I, personal I want a reasons, t-shirt. I want a t-shirt. Oh, hundred percent. Well, I, I, I have for personal reasons, like a, a deep and abiding love for mm-hmm. Delco. It was, uh, I, uh, met some very nice people who really helped me out of a tough situation there. So I know Delco gets 
a rap and, and definitely has its own personality, but that's kind of the charm. Um, I know it can also be the not charm uh, in some cases, but um, uh, very fond of Delco. So this, I just tickled me a little bit. So um, it'll be sponsoring one of the new fields in the uh, Wispis Sportsplex um, and doing some other, you know, match day signage, other sponsorships, you'll see them mm-hmm. around. But this was the most interesting part to me. They will actually, uh, if you've been down there, there is a large uh, union um set of letters that you can stand and be i believe that you're the i in it mm-hmm. you know which would make sense mm-hmm. uh they're doing mm-hmm. something uh similar um uh, a large delco that you can pose with for your selfies and that kind That's of thing awesome. which just just warms my little heart um so definitely gonna have to drag scoops over there and um get get some pictures with that um it's funny I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, I think we have to work a, a shot of the Delco in one of our our uh, Instagram uh, posts, or I don't know, we'll work it into an episode or something. Yeah, well, Delco will make an appearance at some point. Yeah, it's a, it's a long season. We can make this work. So, um, <laughs> that's but yeah, awesome. um, yeah, it just made me smile today. So, and then um, in other soccer news, uh, we now know that. Philly will host six matches during the 2026 wow. World Cup, awesome. um, five in the group stage and one in the round of 16 right. on July 4th. That won't be crazy traffic wise at all. <laughs> um, since July it's also... 4th, 2026, the <laughs> 250th anniversary of the in- de- Declaration of Independence. Yeah. In Philadelphia, in Philadelphia, the birthplace yeah. of the United States. Yeah. Uh, presu- I at the link. Which, you know, with every other, um, you know, sports flex that's down there and might be hosting something as yeah. well. I don't know. Um, yeah, that won't be, that's gonna be uh, bonkers. an absolute circus um, that I would still try to attend if I could, was lucky enough to get a ticket. But I'm so, on the volunteer list for the World Cup in 2026. So hopefully something will actually happen with that. And, and you know, they, they say that that's a good way to you know, possibly get some early access. And nice. if you're interested in, in, in the world cup in 2026 <laughs> and you can be a part of the, uh, you know, sign up to be the volunteer. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I need you to drop that link in chat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, th- I think the only thing that makes that even more awesome is that that round of 16 match on July 4th is against England. That would just be quite I, literally I, one of the comments I saw on social was like, USA England make it happen. Let's yeah. do this. Want FIFA so, riders. Yeah, really. Of course the US actually has to get that far. Yeah, Hopefully exactly. Well. Make it out of group. <laughs> right. Which yeah. uh uh yeah. Doesn't seem ser- terribly likely, but well actually they have to make it they have to qualify still. So. What am I talking about? Well they automatically get in. Oh that's right. That's right. I forgot host nation. Yeah. Which oh, I don't quite nations. understand how they get three host nation automatic bids, but at the same point. I mean, out of out of this area, U.S., Mexico, and Canada, I think are pretty much going to make it. Uh, so they seem to know. allow more teams every time, too. Mm. Yeah, this is actually going to be the largest uh, number yeah. of teams in the tournament, if I remember right. It's going to be a quite literal World Cup at some point. <laughs> it's going to be everybody. A return, a return uh, performance from Fiji. Hopefully, let's go Luxembourg. Was um, it America Samoa that they just had that movie about that Thomas Rung and uh, oh yeah what's his name next um, goal wins or something like that yeah oh. what's his name um, Taika Waititi best, oh Taika Waititi no not Taika Waititi but uh, Michael Fassbender's in it oh yes. anyway yeah it'll be good to to see these these World Cup matches here in Philly uh, six of them is exciting. Yeah, man, uh, that's a nice, nice grouping because I mean it's three countries hosting, and we get six of the games, and uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be a good time to be in Philly. You know, these these teams, wherever they're, whatever countries they are, because I know the U.S. will not be among them, but uh, you know whatever countries that are going to be playing here it should be fun games to go and go and get a chance to watch, and they're all going to happen at the link. Is that right? I would imagine. I, I I was looking for confirmation of that. I I think that's what's happening, but I actually couldn't find confirmation. But I would. I'm cup of coffee, like sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Seems like a safe bet. Yeah. So, um, but related to all that, just to go back to kind of bring it full circle. I mean, I know Ali was part of like the, like yep. the world cup ambassador thing for, for mm-hmm. bringing it here. And, uh, yeah, just to reading that article about Ali getting that position and just like all the other things that this guy does aside from playing soccer is oh, just yeah. staggering. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've done nothing with my life. And mm, he's uh a very busy man. I wonder how much of these numbers was uh Ali um was able to, you know, help get us these numbers. So absolutely. Le- less exciting about the World Cup finals in LA. No, the final is in New York. Oh, yeah. The oh, that's right. No, you're right. The, uh, you're right. Actually, no, it's in New Jersey. That's right. It's in New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, it's in New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So I, I read something today that that led me astray. So yeah, the that. U.S. is playing two games in L.A. or something. That's, like I admit that. that. I think that's that what might have been yeah. what I, I I crossed a wire. Well, yeah. actually, I'm happy. I'll take New Jersey over L.A. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I assume East Rutherford is is at the Giants. Is that yeah, that would yeah, be my okay. guess. Giants, Giants and Jets Stadium, yeah, whatever, yeah, okay. the, whatever it's called now, and whatever it will be called then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's not New York, but it's just close enough that they, you know, fall into that orbit. Mm-hmm. It's slightly easier to get to, but slightly, slightly. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, that will do it for this week on uh, More Philly Union. Our website is surprise, surprise, amorephillyunion.com. Email pod at amorephillyunion.com. Uh, Twitter is amorephillyu. No, I'm not saying the other one. Um, Instagram, YouTube, threads, amorephillyunion. Uh, we have a very eclectic Spotify playlist um, under also under our more fellow union. Uh, so be careful when you're looking on Spotify for our podcast, we have both the playlist and the podcast there, but uh, you can figure that get out. Them both. You guys are smart. Um, yeah. Get them both. Um, and you can get our podcast wherever you get yours. Like I mentioned, Spotify, Google until it goes away, Apple, Amazon, tune in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of A More Philly Union. We are your hosts. I'm C. I'm E. And I'm Paul. Go, Go Union! Union. We're never gonna get that. Right. Never gonna get it. 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 Now we're gonna need to find some song with Captain in it or something like that uh, to add to Spotify. Do Captain and Tennille? No. <laughs>